Hi there, welcome to Kid Squid Studios where it all comes together. I am Kelly, and I've had such a good time editing my photos on the Wacom One in tandem with the Corel Paint Shop Pro. I thought we could spend some time together today just editing as many photos as we can. And maybe my editing decisions might influence your next editing session, or even convince you to start editing your photos at all. Okay, so let's get into the hard drive and find some photos to edit. I actually do them in order, so let's see what's next. Open up Corel, and we'll definitely do this one. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, that's cool. And let's go ahead and pick the next one we're going to work on. Yeah, definitely that one too. Ooh, some fungi. Oh, it's your babies. Look at these reds in here. That's cool. Okay, so it looks like we've got plenty of pictures to work with here. Um, let's just go ahead and get started with this first one. What are we going to do to it? So, after I pull up a picture, uh, I usually start looking at it and I start making a plan on what I'm going to do to it. Cropping, cloning, color, contrast. Am I going to saturate something? Am I going to do layers and then cut holes in the layers? Or what am I going to do? I kind of make all those decisions before I even start. I have a feel of what I want to go ahead and get done. And then I give it a shot. And if I'm getting through it pretty quick, then I stick to it. But if it's having too much of an issue, then I reevaluate and come at the picture again from a different direction. It's almost there right off the bat. Um, I'd like to emphasize this sign over here. We're going to go ahead and crop in a bit, cutting the top of this tree off. I think that would be really good, so that way we don't get distracted with the top of the tree, because that's not the topic. That's not your subject. The subject is the sky and the flowers. We've got these power lines over to the left. It's not going to be too bad, but I think we could get rid of them. It kind of distracts us. We can clone them out. I try to keep the cloning to a minimum and any kind of those kinds of edits, but sometimes there's these little elements in there that you're like, God, I wish that was just this, like a street cone in the background somewhere. You're like, if that weren't there, this would be a gorgeous picture. Uh, I do go ahead and do a little bit of cloning like that, but I try to keep things well within reality. So we're going to go ahead and give a bump to the saturation, so that way the blues and purples in these flowers really start to pop. Um, once again, keeping it well within the realm of reality. Some of the reds and purples in the bark will also pop out. This sign might get a bit more orange. We'll see what happens. As far as the contrast, maybe the smallest bump. It only needs a drop of contrast. I think that's about it. If there's any other adjustments, I'll talk about it when I get to it. So let's go ahead and pull this image over onto the 4K platform that we have set up. And we drop it. And you see it's just a little bit bigger than the 4K, which is fine. There we go. All right, now that it's this size, now we can crop it. So let's look at our crop on top of this sizing. I say let's roll with it. Bam. 
Yeah, I think that's cool. All right. Now let's look at any of the cloning that we're going to have to do. But before we do that, you make a copy of this. And you make the first one invisible. And you only work on the copy of what you just did. So in essence, every single time you do something major to the picture, you make a copy of it and start working on the next copy of it. First, let's deal with these power lines and this drop of a street light. There's this pattern over here to the right that's uninterrupted at the same height, distance, and light quality of where we want to be replacing. And it looks perfect. Okay. Hmm. Let's deal with this light. There we go. Not bad. So these telephone wires are disappearing really nicely. go. Only a little bit left over here on the left. Okay, now we just got the top of the pole. Let's get rid of that. Oh no, look at all these wires up here. Let's get rid of them. Go. Place some of those leaves. There we go. Reconnect those leaves to the tree. bit of effort and they can go away. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it can't be distracting.
That's why every time you clone in a little tiny separate area, you want to grab something that looks exactly like the area that you're replacing. Yeah, there we go. See how the poles just disappearing. You use these leaves out here that have a lot of sky between them. And that dappling really, really helps. Clean up the edge of the sign there, that it's a little fuzzy. Switch areas. Grab this green. And when we scroll back to any distance, like even one quarter back from where we were way in there, and you can't see any of it. Much less way back here. It's beautiful. Okay. No distracting wires. We just need to make the decision do we want to get rid of this little tiny bit of sign over here? I say, yeah, let's get rid of it. Yeah, see now the walking man on the sign doesn't feel like he's clustered together with a bunch of other yellow things. Now it's obvious. He by himself. He good. Okay, now we can move on to some color grading and things like that. Uh, let's start with a little bit of contrast. Okay, we're going to come in here and look at some of these shadows that are in the grass and watch the contrast. And definitely that shadow in the background forest. I usually turn it up to the point where the dark really starts to change and get rid of that white sheen, but you don't lose any of the details that are in the darkness. And then, if you feel like the whole picture is a little bit too dark, you can bring the brightness back up a point or two. Yeah, there we go. And already, we can see way more blue and purple in the flowers. The greens are way more deep and saturated without even having to touch the saturator yet. Okay, that looks nice. So now when we pull up the saturator, we really don't have to touch it very hard at all. See, like those presets are way too much. Okay, so now that we've brought everything back to factory default, let's scroll in just a drop. All right, that was a bit too big of a drop. There we go. And move our picture over so we can see both the forest and the sign. 
and we're going to start with that drop of saturation, right? See, just a little tinge of it. Now the bark on the tree really pops, and in the shadows and in the flowers right there, we can really start to see the pinks and purples start to come out. So, let's make our highlights a bit brighter for this scene. I usually go darker, but the scene really calls for some bright. So you want to feel happy and like you're actually walking through the field with him and all that. So, let's come back and look at the whole picture. Yeah, I feel like it pops a bit more. And let's look at the focus meter. I usually throw it all the way to the top just to see what it looks like, and it's always like, no, don't do that. And the same thing with GoPro footage. If you keep your GoPro on super sharp, it has this weird effect on, like, the hairs on your face and, you know, bark and things like that. Things look really strange. Way too sharp. And we're looking for a slightly more ethereal effect. Not overly so, but slightly. Instead of bringing your white balance up to bring a little more brightness into the photo, uh, you can bring your shadow levels up, um, making the shadows themselves a little brighter. And that also adds, a, if you bring it up a little more than usual, it adds to that ethereal kind of fuzzy-ish effect. And now let's pop back, look at the whole picture. See, now it's really starting to feel warm and happy, but not hot in any way. It feels like just a perfect day. Not too bright. It's not dark or overcast. Yeah, that's a nice change. So let's go and keep that. And see if we need to decide to do anything else. Honestly, guys, I think this one is done. We can go ahead and render it and move on to the next photo. And it looks like that only took about 25 minutes. I lied, 35 minutes, but still, not bad. Let's take a gander at the original picture next to this one. Oh, wow. That's a huge difference. But let's go ahead and pull up another one and do another project. All right, where are you? So seriously, just some contrast. And this one's done. I shot it at the right crop. Brightness and contrast. I mean, is that not perfect? Oh my god. Alright, so negative 10 and 22. So the last, that's, it always reverts to the last thing that you used, which I like because sometimes it's exactly what you want. Um, but I'm gonna but I always then default it and then work it again and see how close I was to the last settings that I used. Ooh. See I'm crushing the uh Contrast way more than I did last time. See, so like, do I want to make it brighter? No, too bright. Perfect. <clears throat> Let's 
Smart Photo Fix. Let's see what it does. I don't like it. Let's again set it back to default. Because I only want to do a couple of things here. Uh, the highlights. Let's look at the highlights. See, a little bit of a push on the highlight, right? Let's see, our saturation. I mean, just a baby, baby, baby. Yeah. Focus would kill it, right? Let's slide in. Usually when you focus too much, it kills pictures like this. So like we start to get... It starts to look weird. Do we want it that sharp? Let's just back off a little bit. Alright, let's look one to one. And then back out. It looks nice. Okay, highlights, shadows. Let's make our shadows a little darker. Yeah, see, now the flower kind of pops again. Dun, dun, dun. What else we got going? Focus, blacks. Let's make our blacks a drop blacker. And that, now the uh, flower should pop even more. And these vines, these veins, so negative, I'm sorry, so 20. Yeah, see, so look at these little uh, t tines, we'll call them. And then if we put it to 20, now they really pop out. That's great. And the whites. We don't want them whiter, do we? We do not. Maybe just a drop. And I think we're good, guys. I think that's it. <clears throat> that's the one. So that didn't take long at all. How long did that take? Eight minutes with all of my talking, too. That's not bad, guys. And no cropping. I think it's perfect the way it is. I think it's perfect the way it is. It's got such an asshole. <laughs> okay. We still gotta come up with a name. Waiting for the bus. Waiting for the bus. Done. Let's do a nighttime one. Let's do this banging shot. Um, this is my first, like, attempt at doing a selfie out in the world. It was like 2.30 in the morning up on one of these highways right by my house. Do I want to crop in? No. I don't want to lose this closeness of the foreground. I want it to really feel like it's there, like this zoomp. So let's hit our normal thing, brightness contrast. Way too much for a nighttime scene, obviously. So default. But you can see that there is that white sheen across it which you almost can't see when you start editing, but it bugs the crap out of me. See, like, even there, I, we've gotten rid of it. But <clears throat> the issue is, is we end up losing the detail of my shirt. The fact that my shirt is there. Let's see if we can turn the brightness up without... There we go. See how we can see the edge of my shirt now. We can see the seam. We can see these wrinkles under my armpit, which we couldn't see before. And let's see if we've brought back too much of that white sheen. I don't think we have. We 
we've made the car brighter by accident and the ground brighter. Well, you can see my face better. And we don't have a white sheen. That's good. The yellow seems to pop nicer. We'll leave that. Go to the smart photo fix. All right, default. Let's go in here just a little bit. And we want the blacks to be a little blacker, but not so black that we lose everything, right? Okay, so what they did is they turned the focus all the way up. Let's to about 50%, 60%. Because a little more clarity in my face is nice, but not too much. Too much we start losing shit. And the highlights, there it is. Pulled the highlights down and now everything isn't so bright. Let's look at the whole thing. Yeah, now it feels more dynamic as opposed, like, this one's good, but there's a bit of more dynamic play in the light. Let's look at our saturation. We'll go in again. Not a lot. See, that might be too much. No, it's not bad. And last step, I mess with the overall meter, see what happens. It might be the best we're going to get. I always do this. I'm always like, I'm not going to crop it. And then when I look, I'm like, dude, maybe you should. Just a little frickin' bit. That is banging. Take this copy of a copy of a copy. Okay, let's look at the background and make a black background. Yes. 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 I love it. I don't know what else to say. I love it. See, this is where I always get stop and I have to think about what the hell I'm going to call it. Rest stop here. Okay, so I think that's plenty of editing. Um, I've obviously got to work my way through the rest of these sets of pictures. I want to get us caught up to present. These things are like two and three years old, like really, really bad. I am so far behind because I wasn't actually taking photography seriously back then. I was just playing around, trying to learn about photography as it pertained to videography. And I figured if I practiced photography, I would learn more about videography and be better at this thing. Uh, little did I know, I was taking pictures, like real ones, because um, I was trying to. And it turned into what I'm doing now, which I would like to show you guys, but I've got to catch y'all up. 
and I've got to catch DeviantArt and everything else up. So please go to the DeviantArt, check out the profile there. You can see all of the other pictures and any of the other pictures that I'm going to be posting in the future will always be on DeviantArt. None of it's going on Facebook or Twitter. It will be on Instagram and DeviantArt. So you can go to either one, give a follow, give a like, um, give a like on this video, subscribe, ring the bell, do all of the things that you want to do, hit all the buttons everywhere, and we'll see you right back here at Kid Squid Studios next time. So please, stay safe, keep creative.